What advice do you have to first-time, second-time filmmakers on seeking a distribution deal and then actually committing to it? This is a tough question for me because every time you make a deal, you learn about new deals. I'll give you an illustration. When I made my first movie, we didn't have people knocking on our door to distribute my movie. We had sales reps. I never even knew what that was, but there's a lot of companies in LA and Hollywood that are sales rep. They rep movies, and they would take your movie to Netflix, and they would take your movie to Fox, and they would make deals. And I totally believe in that scenario. Never even occurred to me you know, that my next movie would be good enough for someone to go, we want to distribute it. Um, of course, there's no money exchange. You know, you have to wait, get the movie distributed, and then eventually make your money back. But if you're lucky enough to hypothetically wake up in the morning at Sundance and somebody buys your movie to distribute it, they might say, we'll give you X dollars, uh, not to mention the fact that after advertising dollars are spent, we'll give you 50 cents on the dollar, you know, whatever it might be. Um, I did not have that luxury, but I did have the luxury this time of getting a, a reputable distribution company um, and um, taking it up a notch. So each time you, I learn more. But distribution, um, and I'm saying this uh, redundantly because I said it before, is an ever-changing medium. And uh, you know, I'm learning uh, right as we speak that you know, filmmakers are expected to do things that have nothing to do with filmmaking. And that is, if you really want to succeed with your movie, social media has to be played. You have to do self-marketing yourself. You got to do interviews like this, and I'm really grateful. But you know, I'm not a social media guy, you know. And but you have to learn how to do that. And it's fascinating to me because I have a number. I don't know on my Facebook. I got a number of people that are filmmakers. So every once in a while, I see a filmmaker promoting their movie, and you know, I'm empathetic because it requires just an inordinate amount of of collective uh, collaboration with the distributor to succeed because they're making the distributor picked up my movies making puts out four movies a month that's 48 movies a year that's a lot of movies for a small company and uh, one of the ones I passed on uh, did 30 or 40 movies a month and they're into the volume aspect so I felt that the one that I picked was more desirable because they would give it more energy and more time and I don't have a regret for that. But here again, I'm speaking from first time experience. I, I, I met a, a gentleman just last week who's doing our social media and he's also a director. A smart guy, young guy, and you know, he, um, uh, I think, um, if I was able to tell him what I learned now on his first movie, he would have done something differently. And it, it's not like he made a horrific mistake, but he ultimately took his movie off the market, you know, and that is, uh, um, there are other ways to do it. No different than the woman who told me that on my new film, you know, my last movie wasn't ever exploited on social media, and uh, the content matter itself should have been an easy pitch, but we didn't do it. So is it a missed opportunity? Not really, because the, the source material is timeless. It's happening every day, and it still continues to happen. But, you know, this movie that I just finished comes out basically a week before Valentine's Day. It's, it's no accident. It's a romantic comedy. I like that idea. You know, it helps take the movie to a noticeable level. Otherwise, you're just going to get in the mush. There's a great story in the trades about Netflix buying movies at Sundance last year. Not this year, last year. And it's written by empathetic uh, filmmakers that said that here's a movie that is, everybody knows the title, everybody would like to see it, but it was on Netflix for one week on the first page, and then it just disappeared. So you have to really know a lot about the movie, properly spell it, and source it. And that, it's like me, I went last night on Amazon to try to see if my movie was up for sale because it just came out. 
and it required me to go through some closed doors in order to get there. Uh, I'm talking about searching for it because when I typed in the name, it didn't pop right up. And there's a whole other subject, you know, naming your movie. Uh, I think distributors would prefer you name your movie A, B, C, D, you know, because it's, it's closer to the beginning of the alphabet. Perhaps not anymore because everybody now is, is searching for their films and you just type it in. But analytics play a role now. You know, you go on to Netflix or go on to Amazon and you, you're, you're trending with romantic comedies. They'll suggest my movie, hopefully. So that is, you know, a plus to them who are making money and a plus to the distributor who's making money. But all that stuff never existed. I mean, the formats of Netflix and Amazon have changed three times in the last month, meaning how, like right now, when you click on a movie on Amazon, a trailer pops up. And Netflix too, you know, the trailer for anything you're watching, a TV show or whatever. While you're still searching, <laughs> it's playing a commercial. That's all new and innovative technology and, and it helps the filmmaker. But to me, what's really critical is, is that if you know about a filmmaker like me talking about what I experienced, you try to avoid that with your own experience. So maybe my movie would be called, you know, come and eat the food. So it's C rather than M. Or maybe it doesn't matter anymore.